so uh, let me start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon from, from Spain. I'm, I'm in Spain. Uh, good day for everyone uh, around the, the world that is uh, joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Francisco Ortuño, as uh, David said. I am assistant professor in the Department of Computer Engineering and uh, Automatics and Robotics at the University of Granada. But uh, most of my research uh, is done in the, in the Andalusia computer, uh, platform for computational medicine, uh, where I was working before uh, moving to Granada. So I'm keeping good uh, colleagues there and we are still researching and, and making things together. So before I am starting my presentation, I would like to, to thank I, ISCB for giving me the opportunity to, to present this, this academy in, in this academic series. Uh, I would like also to uh, thank uh, David, David Crail, Professor David Crail, for making all the arrangement and uh, all the efforts to make this presentation uh, happen, all the uh, headache was for uh, from him to make it uh, possible and also of course i want to thank all of you the attendants uh, to be here today that i know that it's not a good really good date really really close to holidays but still thank you so much for attending this this presentation so that said let's start with the presentation that is entitled uh, the scientific data uh, predicting health trajectories uh, for diabetes uh, electronic health records. So I would like to start uh, presenting who we are in this project uh, and how we are collaborating to make possible to public, uh, to make open uh, a large data uh, from uh, private health uh, records. Uh, from one part in this collaboration project, we are uh, in the uh, Andalusian platform of, of computational medicine uh, Joaquin Dopazo, the, the head of the platform, uh, and uh, Carlos Lautera, who is uh, a great uh, machine learning research. And from the other part, uh, we have uh, David Craig, who is the moderator today from Bogu University. Both David and, uh, and Joaquin uh, belongs to CAMDA. So this was a really good opportunity to try to make a really good scientific data data set, uh, a synthetic data set that could be uh, available for those people interested in the uh, CAMDA contest uh, challenge. So that way, I, I you will hear me several times today to say we are open to for you to participate, to take the data, to analyze the data, to see if there is some discoveries to do in the data and the synthetic data, and of course we can validate later in the in the real data. We encourage you to do that in Canada. So to give you a little bit of context, uh, our uh, center, the platform uh, for uh, computational medicine is located in Andalusia. Andalusia is a, a region in Spain, the southeast region in Spain, but also is the uh, crowded, the more, most populated region in, in Spain with more than uh, 8.5 million of people. You can think about this uh, amount of people is quite similar to uh, entire uh, countries in Europe, like, for example, Austria or uh, Switzerland. So do uh, we have a really good environment here in the region uh, to study uh, health records and uh, population related uh, research. Also, I want to, for those of you that didn't know, uh, uh, clarify that in Spain, we usually have uh, in, an independent public health system for each region. It's totally independent for each region. So in Andalusia, we have the Andalusian health system that it, we, uh, the public Andalusia uh, has its health system, which is one of the biggest in Spain. And uh, fortunately, our institution, the uh, Platform for Computational Medicine, uh, is considered part of that uh, Andalusian health system network. So always under the supervision and uh, with all the ethics uh, committees approved, uh, we are able to access some uh, private and protected uh, health data under request and uh, manage those data inside the network as we want once uh, the, the, committee, the ethics committees have approved it. 
So that's a, a, a good opportunity for us, like uh, data scientists and bioinformatics to analyze data, big data. But also it's also important to clarify that one of the uh, most amazing resources we have here in, in the health system in, in Andalusia is the, uh, which, which is called uh, the Population Health Database or, or BPS in Spanish, that is uh, Base Poblacional de Salud, which is an effort and an infrastructure that uh, has been uh, developed last uh, few years to uh, create a unique platform where all the uh, clinical data has been uh, digitalized and uh, stored in a, a, structured uh, a, structure, a structured platform. So uh, as you can imagine that uh, it's like the dream for data analysis because we can uh, find everything in that uh, database uh, related with all the uh, population in uh, health, health related with all the population in Andalusia. Uh, and it's quite uh, curated and uh, clean. In fact, right now we have here in BPS, more than uh, records, uh, health records for more than 50 million patients. Uh, take it uh, that were took during the last around 20 years. And this uh, uh, platform, this resource, uh, help us uh, to uh, find new uh, discoveries that uh, couldn't uh, be possible if everything wasn't uh, that centralized with secondary, secondary analysis uh, in the data or uh, do all the evidence uh, for real world uh, um, research. So uh, that uh, is an infrastructure that we have here, but uh, unfortunately, probably because it's hard to get access to, to that platform only from inside, as we have in the institution, uh, can be uh, accessed. Uh, the data in the platform is uh, quite overused. Uh, sorry, underused, and that's why we thought it was good, uh, it was a good opportunity to analyze the data to find what is interesting data and trying somehow to make uh, people access. Uh, I mean, access uh, to make the, that data accessible for for people. But the problem is, as I was saying, that uh, for that uh, infrastructure, we cannot uh, explore Load, ex expose the data uh, outside the network, outside of uh, from the uh, Andalusian health system. And even when we have uh, good computational resources here, uh, uh, they are not in, uh, sufficient to analyze all the data or to uh, do all the uh, exploration that we would like to do. And for uh, on another hand, those people, those uh, people like probably most of you that are uh, interested in uh, searching the data, in exploring the data, in discovering or uh, new new patterns in the data or making some classification and prediction in the data are not access, uh, are not uh, able to access the data. So that's uh, the problem we found here that we don't have enough uh, data scientists to make all the uh, analysis that we would like to do inside the data, but uh, all the data, uh, the, data uh, the data, the machine learning community and the data analysis that uh, can access and ex explore the data are not uh, having access to the data. So that's why uh, this uh, project, the synthetic patient, was. Uh, uh, originally thought. It's just that we want to make people accessing the data, but without accessing the real data or the private data that it's keep, is kept inside the, the network here in Andalusia. So our objective here is that we can produce a generator, a synthetic patient generator inside the uh, the network that can 
generate any time of the any type of data of the health records to make it available for people outside the the network and uh, can uh, do science and and and, uh, and discover and and make uh, their own analysis uh, over the data. To do that, the procedure that we are following right now is we uh, together, uh, the Platform for Computational Medicine and, and uh, the Boku University uh, sit together and decide which part of the data we are interested in uh, inside the BPS. We write the the corresponding project to the uh, ethical committees and once they have approved that uh, the access to that data inside the network inside the health network we as a fps or as, as a platform of computational uh, medicine are able to access the real data so once we have uh, access to the real data we compute uh, complex uh, generative models to the data to make a, a data set, a totally synthetic data set that can be then uh, moved outside the network and can be available for the, all the community to, to make their own research. And of course, uh, we are collaborating with Boku University to uh, search uh, in the synthetic data for pattern, for uh, new, new discoveries, new uh, predictions. And then we can inside the uh, network validate those predictions over the, the real data. But the, the hard part of the computation that is making the prediction in the big data that we have been uh, um, offered uh, and, since, uh, and generated, uh, it's done outside the, the network. And of course, to do that, uh, we know that there are. Uh, they're becoming very popular, all the uh, generative models that they are uh, out there right now. It's true that uh, most of them are um, almost always uh, applied to uh, image, image generation and now text generation. But uh, those uh, same, the same generative, uh, generative models, uh, like we, we can see here, the, the uh, uh, sorry, the the generative adversarial networks, the diffusion models, the transformer, the uh, autoencoders uh, are also uh, available to create and to generate uh, health records. So that's the our start point. Uh, we want to apply this uh, generative model to the data that we have in the in the network in the BPS. And as a, as a, just a, as a curiosity. Uh, in this uh, study that we, we can see here in these slides, uh, uh, it is suggested that, uh, or Garnet uh, was suggesting that synthetic data for all the data, for all the uh, inter, inter, uh, artificial intelligence models, the synthetic data will uh, overcome the real data uh, in less than 10 years. So when we are uh, running new uh, application in inter, inter, uh, artificial intelligence, probably, most of the data that we are using for uh, running and training those applications will be uh, synthetic in, in a few years. So uh, among this project, so, sorry, uh, among this, uh, these models, the one that is most commonly used for, for generating uh, health uh, records, electronic health records is uh, the GANs, the, uh, uh, generative adversarial networks. But uh, there are several approaches that are uh, combining those guns with other approaches to make it more uh, complex and generating more realistic data. But the idea is the same as uh, or in other projects. We have uh, uh, two different networks. One is the discriminator, one is the generator. So the discriminator uh, will be comparing the real uh, electronic health re records against the uh, random, some random electronic health records that are generated by the generator and uh, progressively with all the information, with all the back propagation from the disc discriminate, discriminator, uh, we will be able to generate uh, every time more and more uh, similar uh, health records to the real ones, 
until the discriminator cannot almost dis uh, distinguish between both. And then we have our uh, data set of uh, synthetic data that are uh, having the same property, the same relationship as the real data, but is synthetic and we don't have a private uh, information there. So one of the first proposal that was done for for health records in in terms of generating uh, synthetic data was um, it's a classic one it's Medgan Medgan uh, it's based in the combination of, of guns and and autoencoders and but the only thing that this uh, this proposal is doing is generating a list of discrete uh, clinical variables like for example, diagnosis for each patient. It's only a list of labels. It's not uh, ordered somehow, or there is no time variable somehow there. But it was the beginning of the of the bibliography or of the uh, state of art of these kind of methodologies, and uh, they were testing it for uh, one very well-known uh, data set that is called MIMIC is for crit uh, critical care uh, patients. And uh, if you can see here in the table at the bottom, they were uh, running for three different, da different data sets uh, from around 10 of thousand patients to 100 of thousand patients. And uh, in terms of codes, how many codes they were uh, generating, it was uh, from almost uh, 200 to a few uh, a, a few tens of, of uh, 90, around 90 uh, levels. So uh, a few years later, uh, the MedGAN was improved by uh, what it was called the MedWGAN and MedBGAN uh, that were the same uh, proposal, but uh, improving the the penalization with uh with the use of the a gradient and also improving the uh, the records that were in the middle of the um, true and synthetic data so uh, the, those the records that were uncertain for the discriminator were also improved as you can see here in the table this uh, the result for this uh, second generation of the of of the model uh, were clearly improving in both cases medgan but uh, most of the times in the three data set were always uh, oh, most of the time were a uh, better result for med vegan than for uh, med w gun and uh, a new iteration for generation models for a uh, health record for electronic health record was this one that is called a dual uh, adversarial uh, autoencoders, which is uh, composed by a sec to sec autoencoder and two guns. Uh, they have a embedded uh, layer first for the encoding all the semantics, all the uh, levels. Still, they have so what they generated, they are generating it's, it's not only the list of uh, diagnosis or pathologies for each patient, but uh, they are able now to uh, add some order in those, pa in those patients. So they will uh, be generating a, sequ a sequence of visits and each visit it will, be, will, will have a, a list of uh, diagnosis of pathologies. So we have somehow now uh, a method that is able to uh, order the data uh, and make it uh, possible to understand, understand how the uh, diagnosis or how the, the data record in the in the health uh, in the, in the health system is ordered in time. We don't have still the time variable to know how many time is uh, passing from one to other record, but still we have all the record in in, in order. So the sample of this. Uh, the model is uh, in the bottom. We have uh, each patient, we have uh, several visits, and for each visit, we have a number, a different number of uh, pathologies or diagnosis that, uh, that has been uh, included in that visit. 
So this uh, third generation of models is the one that we were using, this specific dual uh, adversarial uh, uh, autoencoders. Autoencoder is the one that we are going to use for, for our uh, generation of uh, uh, synthetic patients. And uh, once we have uh, decided which model we are going to use, uh, we were uh, thinking what uh, what is the the data from the VPS that we are interested in, and we finally decided that we wanted to start with the diabetes patients. And there are several reasons why we are uh, deciding this. First of all, is in this uh, in this slide, uh, of course, diabetes is a worldwide. Uh, big problem we have like more than uh, half a million diabetic people in the world and it it is expected that is going to be increasing into more than 1.5 billions in, in 30 years and but also uh, not only because it's a massive uh, disease that is uh, taking uh, the the life of people, and, uh, in fact, is one of the top 10 most uh, deadly uh, uh, disease. But also because uh, since we have a lot of people uh, suffering for that, we will uh, be able to find a huge amount of data about diabetes. And that's why we want, because our main purpose is to make not only a synthetic uh, patient, or a synthetic data set, but uh, that the synthetic data, uh, data set will be as huge as possible because we want to have uh, a lot of information and a lot of heterogeneity in, inside the, the data. So that's why also we want to, to start with uh, diabetes. Also, it's important to uh, highlight that diabetes is even worse in Spain. Uh, as you can see here in the map, uh, it's in, in, in average, uh, diabetes in Spain is higher, the prevalence is higher than uh, in the rest of Europe. And uh, it also be, uh, it is expected to increase in the, in the next uh, years. So, and there, the, one of the problem of diabetes is that sometimes we don't know, we, we know the complication for diabetes, the consequences of dia diabetes, but we don't know if there is something that we can, uh, pre uh, fine to prevent those consequences. So you can see here that we have like microvascular uh, consequences like kidney uh, problem or macrovascular, uh, micro, uh, macrovascular like coronary diseases, like uh, heart failure and also retinopathies in, in microvascular diseases. So are we able, so our uh, objective here is, are we able to create a path, a synthetic uh, data set where those relationship with uh, consequences in diabetes can be uh, coded so we can study those synthetic data set we can find or we can predict in a, a anticipated uh, 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 we can anticipate the the consequences of diabetes with the synthetic data without touching the hair, the real data and then uh, prove and validate that uh, those uh, predictions uh, are um, consistent in the real data. And if we go uh, a, a step down in the map and we focus in uh, Andalusia, as I, as I was saying, uh, in the BPS, we have found that we have more than 1.2 uh, million uh, patients record in the BPS in our Andalusian health system. Uh, the diagnosis for those patients, the diabetes diagnosis was from uh, the 30s age in the last, um, uh, in the past uh, single, uh, uh, and from, from the 1938 uh, to the 2019, like four years ago, the average uh, year uh, or age a diagnosis was around 60, 61 years. And we have for each of these patients, we have uh, in total uh, more than uh, 6 million of records of visits and 
for each visit or for the total visits, we have more than five, uh, seven, sorry, seven point seven million of uh, diagnosis recorded in those visits. So it's uh, we believe that uh, data set it's ideal to to prove that we can generate data synthetic data from a huge data set where we have recorded most of the uh, visits that those patients have had and we have recorded also some of the diagnosis that they they had uh, they have been uh, diagnosed so for this first uh, synthetic data synthetic data set we are going to uh, code the data using the model that we have mentioned before the um, the dual uh, adversarial uh, the dual adversarial uh, autoencoder and we are going to have uh, 30, uh, 33 different uh, pathologies that are chronic pathologies so that said that we cannot have the same pathology in different visits. One, one we have been, uh, we have found the pathology uh, diagnosed in one visit. It's uh, kept for for the remaining visits, so it's only uh, diagnosed once. And then we are going to add, like an improved to the method of the dual uh, adversarial uh, autoencoder. We are going to add. Uh, two more uh, additional information. One is the gender with two gender codes. And one is trying to, uh, to see, we want to prove that we are able with the same, as I said before, with the same uh, schedule where we have a order, uh, order list of visits, but we don't have time between visits. We want to prove if we are able to code inside the visits, the, the, the age. For now, for this first generation, we are going to keep only the decade. So we want to know in which decade each diagnosis uh, has been done. So the way we code the data is for each patient, we uh, add a visit uh, zero where we only code the gender. It's not a real visit, it's just to code the gender. And then we have the following visit, the real visit for where for each visit we code in addition to the diagnosis, we code the decade of the of, of, of this visit for the, the age the age decade for for the patient in this visit. So uh, this first generation, uh, uh, we started with, with the data set that I have been uh, explained, but we realized that there was some cleaning and uh, post-processing that we would need to, to do to make the data set a little bit more accurate and a little bit less noisy. So what we did was remove all the uh, patients that were uh, not recording the gender because there was some patient that we were, were, were not able to, to uh, retrieve the, the gender. We, we, uh, we were also removing those patients that uh, didn't have a birth date because it wasn't recorded or it was uh, inconsistent. And finally, uh, we realized that uh, the, the, the quality of the records were uh, low in, uh, before uh, uh, 2003. So we decided just to keep those patients that were diagnosed uh, after 2003 for, uh, of diabetes. So we have more recent patients, and we have a more consistent uh, health record for those patients. So that uh, once we, we have done that, we reduce our data set of input data set for this first generation to almost 1 million, a little bit lower than uh, 1 million uh, patients. Uh, and we reduce the medicine, the medical visit to almost 5 million and the total diagnosis for, to uh, six millions. So once we have trained the uh, dual uh, uh, adversarial autoencoder with those parameters, we produce a totally synthetic data set uh, of almost one million synthetic patients. 
to validate that that patient were uh, having features and were keeping information from the real data, we we did several tests. The first one was comparing the uh, the frequency of each uh, diagnosis in the population against the the real frequency that was uh, performed in in the real data and uh, plotted in the, uh, to see their correlation. And as we can see here, uh, the correlation from, from both the real frequencies and the uh, synthetic sequences, uh, sorry, uh, synthetic uh, frequencies were very, very, very close. So more than 90% in correlation. So that uh, a good start point. And we also wanted to uh, study how well the distribution of different uh, measures in the synthetic data uh, was uh, per, was similar, or if the the distribution was similar to the real data. So we also ran the visit uh, each the distribution of visit per patients and the diagnosis for each patient uh, in the top in the bo and bottom of this distribution. And you can see for BC, uh, it's almost the same distribution, both in uh, synthetic data and the real data. And uh, there is a little bit more um, dispersion in the diagnosis for each patient, but still the, the distribution are quite similar. Another thing that we wanted to do since we have We have the option of have we uh, we have uh, with this method with the uh, generative, generative method we have the order of the diagnosis. We wanted to know if the uh, frequencies where each uh, diagnosis is uh, seen after a, a previous diagnosis, uh, those frequencies are similar in synthetic and real data. So we call that the co-occurrences of uh, pathologies. So uh, when we have a new diagnosis, how many times for people with a, this diagnosis has uh, had before uh, a specific diagnosis? So we did that for both, and we tried again to to see if those frequencies were uh, similar in the real data. The co-occurrences frequencies were uh, similar in the real data and the synthetic data. In this case, uh, the dispersion is a little bit higher. It's normal because we are having a, a more complex metrics that it's co-occurring co uh, uh, pathology, pathologies, but still we have a correlation of 0 uh, 0.94 and uh, the, the error, the root mean square error was uh, keeping uh, 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 lower too. But what is more important for these co-occurrences is that we, uh, what we did was we are going to keep only those uh, co-occurrences that uh, are very frequent in the population. Over 60% uh, of patients have that, that uh, co-occurrence and we will keep all the uh, diagnosis, all the pathologies that have at least in once, once more than 60% uh, of cases with uh, of correlation with other uh, pathology. So we once we have filtered by this 60%, we did a clustering uh, for the co uh, occurrences and we realized that the, some of the clustering that we were having in real data, like for example, the cluster you can see here, the cluster one, diabetes with uh, hypertension, the cluster Two, that is uh, ischemic heart disease with heart failure, or the cluster three, that is a uh, uh, secular uh, already uh, cardio uh, cerebrovascular diseases, uh, were kept in both cases in the synthetic and the real data. So that um, when we saw that, we thought that somehow there's some relationship between the. Uh, pathologies and the order of, 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 of those pathologies happening that is kept in the synthetic data uh, as in the same way as in the real data. But we were one step more and we decide, okay, so 
for this in this generation in this synthetic data for those uh, pair of uh, co-occurring um, pathologies uh, are we able to find an intermediate uh, pathology that uh, is the most common between these two so what we did was keeping all the most frequent uh, co-occurring pathology we uh, try to find an, an intermediate path pathology that is uh, the most frequent one. So that way we started to create tra trajectories of three uh, different uh, pathologies in real data and three different pathologies in, in pinset data. And again, we realized that uh, if we take the top 10 trajectories, the top 10 more frequent trajectories between three uh, different pathologies, seven of those uh, trajectories that were found in real are kept are also the top the top 10 or are also seven of them are also in the top 10 trajectories in the synthetic data so we again prove this way that we can uh, identify trajectories in synthetic data that uh, were kept from the real data and those three that were failing, uh, I can say they were very close to the top 10 in the synthetic data. Like 11 was one, I think 18 was the other one. Uh, so uh, it seems like the synthetic data, re the synthetic data real, uh, uh, really have uh, all the pattern, all the um, uh, relationship between uh, the uh, the pathologies and keep the order of the pathologies as in this real data. So for this first data set that we generated, let's uh, see some lesson learned that we realize and some conclusion. First, the generated data, it's uh, uh, always uh, the the first step, but it needs it not it, it is not perfect. It needs to have a very careful cleaning and post processing before we can analyze because generation is not perfect. And even if the original real data doesn't have empty visit, it produces empty visit. It can produce sometimes very rare, rare, but it can produce. I haven't uh, added in the in the slide, but it can produce. Patient with different genders, it can produce patients with no diabetes uh, in their records when all the patient in the input is uh, with diabetes, but still it, ha it can have those errors. So it needs a careful cleaning. All this uh, result I have shown, it's after we have uh, cleaned the data, we have cleaned the, the data set, the generated data set, the synthetic data set. But again, we can, for those uh, results I, I have shown, we can see like distribution are very close to real data, are very, very close to real data. We can see that distribution in the uh, synthetic data are almost the same as uh, the real data. And what is more important, co-occurrences and trajectories, the order of the data, the order of the uh, diagnosis is somehow kept to the uh, to similar or it's really Rationally similar to the real data, and it's keeping it's keeping the uh, principal relationship in the in the real data. So once we have done this, and this was uh, proposed as a challenge in Camda last year, so we realized that this uh, synthetic data was quite good. We uh, open and make it available for people to analyze, to make some uh, discoveries and uh, prediction over the data. And once we did that, we wanted to keep going and making a second generation of the data that uh, were a little bit more complex or at least with more resolution. That's why we repeated the same procedure uh, quite similar to the, this one uh, with the same uh, dual uh, adversarial uh, autoencoder, but we wanted to make it with more resolution in age. So we kept the same 83 chronic pathologies, the same structure of the data, of the input data, same codes for gender, but in this case, instead of adding the uh, decade, the age decade, we are going to add the specific uh, age in years 
uh, for, for the visit. So we are going to add new uh, one, uh, hand, uh, 120 um, codes that are referring to from uh, one, from 9,000 to 9,120 uh, that are the codes to uh, refer to a specific uh, age in each visit. So the data is exactly the same, So, but the only thing is that for each visit, instead of having the decade, we are going to have the specific, the specific year, the specific age. So once we have this uh, codification for the second generation, we were uh, also curating the input data. As you can see here, and it can be a little bit uh, tricky, we added uh, a little bit more patients in the second generation than in the first one. The reason uh, for removing patients were almost the same, unknown gender, unknown birth date, uh, or diabetes diagnosis before uh, 2003. But uh, the reason why we have more patients in this second generation is that from the, uh, the original data set, uh, not all the patients were uh, included in the first generation because they, they, they were patients that uh, we didn't have all the information. And for this second generation, we were able to add uh, around uh, 2,100, uh, sorry, 200,000 uh, new patients. That's why we have in this second generation, in addition to have more resolution in uh, age, we have a little bit more uh, patients or a, a bigger uh, data set. But uh, the remaining uh, information are quite the same. A little bit, of course, if we have more patients, we have a little bit more medical visit, we have a little bit more uh, diagnosis, but uh, the, the age uh, uh, for um, the time where uh, diabetes was diagnosed was quite the same, etc. So all uh, aim here was first to uh, understand if we can keep the same quality of the data in the in synthetic data, but when we increase the number of levels and we increase the resolution of the of the uh, age. So um, we are going to you are going to see we are going to almost repeat most of the uh, uh, result most of the uh, plots because we want to be sure that we are keeping the same information as we had in the first generation, but we are adding mm, more resolution in the age. Uh, in terms of the frequency, as I said before, in terms of, in terms of the sequence, the frequency uh, for each diagnosis, for each pa uh, pathology, uh, the correlation uh, stay almost the same, more than uh, 0 0.99, so it's uh, quite good, it's still quite good. The only thing that we have added is more resolution to the to the age, and we can see here in the in the distributions that the distribution of ages in the real data and the synthetic data are quite similar, a little bit more higher in, in synthetic, but uh, the distribution are quite, quite similar, they're very similar. And the other point that we wanted to do is to compare the same distribution that we have uh, seen before, the diagnosis uh, for each patient, the visit for each patient, and the patient for each pathology, the number of patients for each pathology. And not only compare, comparing each of the generation against the real data, but also comparing first generation and second generation, because we want to prove somehow that adding new age, uh, more resolution to the age didn't change the uh, distribution or didn't change the quality of the distributions in the first generation against the second generation. So that's why we are here representing uh, the three uh, distribution. The first one is the real uh, in, in, in blue, the second one is the, the first generation of the synthetic data in orange, and the third one is in green, the second generation of the synthetic data. And uh, interestingly, for the two uh, last uh, distribution, the visit for each patient and the patient for each pathology, the comparison between uh, the distribution in first generation and second generation give us that those 
were exactly the same or were uh, the same distribution. The p-value didn't uh, pass the threshold to say we have different distributions. So that's important for us because we wanted to be sure that we are not uh, losing information because we are uh, increasing the uh, age uh, resolution. Uh, in the same way we did uh, before, we are going to compare in the second generation the synthetic co-occurrences against the real co-occurrences. And uh, in this case, we have a, a little bit lower uh, correlation, but still a, a reasonable correlation. But what is more important that we are keeping the same clustering when we uh, uh, filter the most frequent uh, co-occurrences and, and do the clustering in the heat map. And we are still, we are losing one of the element of the third clustering, but uh, other than that, we are keeping the same first cluster diabetes and hypertension, the same uh, the same cluster reading with uh, heart diseases, and the the third cluster with one uh, less element. And just to give you a summary of how we have been comparing these two generations, we have uh, we have seen that uh, in terms of uh, error or relative error or correlation it depends which metric we use uh, for pathology frequencies sometimes the first generation was uh, having better results sometimes the second generation is having the better result for co-occurrences uh, results are a little bit better in uh, first gen, uh, generation but still uh, clusters are kept in the same way in both generations and what is more important, some of the distribution, as I said before, were exactly the same were uh, uh, in the first generation and the second generation. So we somehow can uh, um, assure that both generations are equ equivalent, but at least the second generation is producing more and more um, uh, resolution in the ages. So that open a new possibility for researchers to make trajectories because they have the, the time information at least in year so they can decide uh, better to how to predict diseases taking into account those years instead of having only uh, decades and uh, just uh, I, I i want to i have a, a little i think two or three more slides uh, one of the things that the, we wanted to do too is making sure that those pathologies that we knew that were uh, consequences or usually consequences uh, from diabetes were uh, kept correctly in in the in, in the synthetic data. So as we can see here, uh, for those uh, pathologies like uh, ischemic heart or chronic kidney disease that were well represented in the real data uh, set like 17% 17, uh, 17 or 10% uh, of the patient have th those uh, pathologies. Uh, error are quite good and we can keep a little bit, we lose some of the patient or some of the per, uh, percentage or some of the frequencies, but still we can have a good result in both first and second uh, generation. But when we have uh, other pathologies that are less frequent, like uh, under 10% of the cases in the real data, uh, the error uh, increased uh, significantly, even for amputation, that is a very rare a consequence of the pathology and it's less than one percent of the cases uh, it's uh, having a, a bigger error uh, generating those data in in the synthetic data that uh, that's uh, expected because we have seen as i said before that in the correlation when we have a the correlation between frequencies in real data and uh, synthetic data uh, those uh, pathologies that are lower in frequency in the entire data set usually have more errors than those pathologies that are well represented in, in the data set, in the real data set. So, 
as conclusion here, you can say that uh, those pathologies that uh, are uh, not that frequent are harder to uh, represent or, or to generate in the in the synthetic data set, but those pathologies that are with a enough uh, representation in the real data uh, are quite well represented and uh, uh, the relationship uh, are kept in, in the synthetic data. And uh, just uh, to finish, uh, I wanted just to uh, show you these uh, plots that uh, our aim here wasn't to predict a, a, a excellent result or to predict uh, how we can um, find or if we can predict, predict that this endpoint that we have seen before uh, with a classific uh, classification. But what we wanted to do here is to be able to analyze if uh, data uh, in synthetic data uh, in, in synthetic data set uh, is enough to find signals to, to find some uh, prediction uh, quality uh, for these uh, endpoints. So uh, what we did here was that uh, we first kept only those uh, pathologies in the synthetic data set that were uh, diagnosed before diabetes and we asked if we were able with a simple, uh, a simple uh, classifier, we were able to predict that having those pathologies before diabetes, we are going to have or not those consequences. The first one is uh, ischemic heart, the second chronic kidney, and the third one is uh, retinopathy. And the point is that uh, we realized that we were able to have a better classifi uh, classification when we uh, train our model, a simple model, just a uh, linear regression model, we were able to have better classification in terms of, of the uh, precision, call, uh, the precision recall curve uh, metric. We were able to have better classification for the three uh, endpoint than uh, a simple uh, dummy uh, classific uh, classification that is taking the most frequent uh, pathology in the, in the or the most frequent uh, variable group in the in the output. So uh, we did this just training, as I said, just training with the synthetic data and testing in the real data. So uh, somehow we want to prove here that the, there is some signal in the, the synthetic data that allow us to predict an endpoint in the real data and it, it it's not good but it's uh, making it better than uh, a simple dummy classification so that's uh, our proof that there is signal in the data and the synthetic data that they that with more sophisticated method we can uh, obtain better results and we can maybe uh, uh, achieve a good predictor to uh, predict some of these uh, or other endpoints and and then validate those in the in the real data so just to finish this second generation what we have learned is that uh, after cleaning again and post processing the data that we remove not only uh, the the data with uh, without the visit without diagnosis the empty visit or or the patient that didn't have diabetes uh, recorded. We also uh, remove patients with no ages or uh, were uh, not, not, not removed, but uh, clean uh, a, a patients with no ages and multiple uh, and patients with multiple ages in the same visit. Just keeping, we realize that we, we can keep uh, the older one in, in each visit and it, it still keep the increasing uh, uh, age in the visits. And we can also uh, remove, uh, as we did before in the first generation, uh, repeated pathologies or uh, uh, patients with no diabetes. We also have proof that the quality and similar, similarity uh, in the second generation is almost the same as in the first generation, but we are increasing information in the second generation with the uh, age resolution. 
And uh, we now are able to, after some additional tests that I want to do, we are now able to make this second generation available. So I encourage you, that's the second same time I, I tell, I encourage you to have a look to the data, to try your own uh, methodologies to predict some endpoints, the ones that we propose or others that you can see related with uh, diabetes. And, and that way we can first discover new uh, methodologies to predict uh, consequences in diabetes, but also we can make that the, um, we can make sure that the data set, the synthetic data set is ha containing the information as in the real data and we can that way validate and make the, the synthetic data uh, stronger. So uh, just uh, for finishing, I want to mention that, uh, of course, we, we keep working. We are uh, starting to add continuous variable to our uh, data set, to, the, to our synthetic data set, like blood test values, demographic like height, weight, or the BMI, or also uh, the, the doses for treatments. And uh, in uh, a second, uh, we, ha we are opening a new line in the research that is trying to create our own uh, Gen uh, generative model, more sophisticated generative model with a uh, health record, including or using diffusion models and transformers to make possible to improve first the quality and the way that we recorded age and then to allow us to add those variables that I have mentioned before, the continuous variable. Again, and just to finish, I encourage you to make your contribution to the CAMDA challenge it will help us. I think it's uh, it's going to be there soon. The second generation. I think uh, we are going to to be able to find interesting thing, interesting prediction in the data, and that help us also to validate the, the real data and to make our methodology for generation uh, make make it more more sophisticated uh, and improved. I want to finish thanking again. Uh, Joaquin, Carlos, and David for for the work that they have done with me for all the suggestions and and all the the meetings that we have and uh, that are being very productive to to achieve these 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 results. Thank you so much. Um. I really enjoyed your talk. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure uh, how the Q&A worked here, whether we will get something in the Q&A section of this frame or whether people will type in the chat or whether they will just speak up. Maybe Seth has a quick comment on the technicalities. If not, I will maybe start with some questions. Um, Seth, maybe you can help us figure out how to ask the audience to contribute questions. Um, in the meantime, uh, um, when you compare the distributions between the real data occurrences of, um, of diagnosis and then the simulated data sets for the first and the second generation, maybe, maybe I didn't see this right, the, the green line, but, but is the second generation better than the first gen or are they just very similar and I didn't see that? It depends on, on, on the distribution. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's a little bit worse, but um, you can see because uh, mm -hmm. most, of, most of the case, the, the distribution, or at least the approximation of the distribution, are almost the same. That's why uh, I started uh, making those uh, tests, the Kolmogorov Smirnov. No? I'm not sure whether I have a network glitch or whether you have a network glitch. Uh, it appears this one is Francisco's network is a small one. Okay. Oh no. Um, well, while we wait in hopes that the uh, uh, huh? get up here, um, if you have a question, you can type it in the chat or the Q and A, uh, or on the bottom left of your screen, you can click the join button, which will raise your hand, and then you'll be able to come on stage like this and share your mic. 
Excellent. Thank you very much, Seth. Francisco, are you back? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you again. Okay. There was a break where we lost you. You were saying something about Kolmogorov, and I guess the next <laughs> word would have been Smirnov, but I don't know what the rest of the sentence was. Yeah, uh, I was saying that uh, that's why, because I didn't appreciate the differences between uh, first generation and second generation distribution. Uh, I did the Kolmogorov Smirnov uh, test, and in some of the distribution, not in all, but some distribution, uh, it's it looks like we're exactly the same even when we but because my 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 worry was that we are increasing we are doubling the number of uh, uh, levels in the system because mm. we have uh, all the years all the ages uh, level so uh, i was worried about uh, losing accuracy in the in the generation what we already did but uh, with what we already did with the first generation, but it looks like even when there is the, there are differences and a little bit uh, there are some distribution that they are a little bit worse. It kept more or less consistent the data, but adding the the age more resolution in the age. Thank you very much. And uh, I I don't know if it was you uh, you asking the. Uh, will you make raw and clean data available? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I, for all the testing tests I did, uh, I wanted to m remove those patients that were introducing noise in my mm -hmm. results. But for the challenge of all the, I I always uh, want to give everything that is generated from the, mm -hmm. because I can't have a criteria that I'm removing something or I can have the idea, as I said, mm -hmm. keeping only the, the um, older age in each visit, but someone can have a little different approach and can have results cleaning the data or better result even cleaning the data in, a, in another way. So we will keep it, we, I, we, we will say that uh, be careful that the data is not clean, that there are some inconsistencies, mm -hmm. but feel free to, to, to do your own uh, curation. Okay, excellent. Thank you. There was another question on the chat. Is there any way to interpret uh, which features from EHR contribute the most to the prediction results? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, or uh, the fact is that we, uh, our purpose wasn't uh, to do a prediction. It was only to uh, prove that the, that we can do predictions with the synthetic data, and uh, it improves the raw, simple dummy classification. Uh, so we 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 use all the all the possible features. But uh, I am sure that if we do a more careful classification, where we can uh, do a feature selection to check which features uh, are uh, contributing more to the to predicting each specific uh, endpoint. We will we will have um, better results, and we can. But we didn't have we didn't do it because we just wanted to prove somehow that uh, there is some signal in the data. Very nice. So. When roughly do you think you can make the new generation data available? Just so people have an idea when they should. Start so the, for it. the data, uh, raw data is uh, is almost ready. I just want to be, to do some additional tests to make sure that the data is consistent. But uh, probably in a few, a couple of weeks or three, I think okay. it will be will be available. So sometime in January. Fantastic. Yeah. There's another question from uh, RJ Murray. Within the data, was there one data point that became much cleaner, better between generations? Uh, yeah. Uh, there was some data points that, that were uh, they're becoming uh, better, and there was some data points that were becoming worse. Uh, in fact, if we let me check the 
when I check for the when, when I show the I can I can share my screen. You can, you can see my, my screen, right? Yeah. So, uh, for example, for the four endpoints that we were uh, analyzing, it's only those endpoints. There, there is more endpoints, but those were the four that we agreed with medical um, clinician in, in our in our platform to to check. Uh, the the two first were better in terms of uh, frequency. Were better. Uh, for the first generation, we are closer to the real mm, frequency in the data, and the third one, retinopathy, uh, was better in in the second generation. Was closer in terms of frequency, uh, where, where it was closer to the real data. And it's it's quite simple. It's just the frequency, but uh, it gives us a, a understanding of there is no. Everything is worse or everything is better, but if there is some th things that are changing, but a general thing or what is more important, a relationship that w why we did co-occurrences, uh, relationship between between um, pathologies are uh, or the most frequent relationship between pathologies are usually kept in both uh, first and second generation.